today's episode of Cheap Shots. This is the third in our series of 28mm lenses. So, don't miss out on the other two comparisons if you're interested in this focal length. Last time, we looked at a bunch of cheapy third-party lenses itself for about $20 US, and you know what? They did pretty well. But today, we're going to look at a few more lenses that are kind of a step up. Some of these are pretty well regarded. How do they repair, How? and I'm interested to know, how do they compare to the reigning champion we've tested in our other two 28mm videos, the Nikkor 28mm f2.8 AIS? We look at these lenses using a 24 megapixel full frame camera. I use a Sony a7 II. It's one of my favorite cameras for shooting vintage lenses because it uh, is 20, 24 megapixels, uh, which is enough to get in there. It's not so many that it blows out some of those vintage lenses that can't quite perform. And uh, it has built in uh, stabilization, which is fantastic. We try to use these lenses and do comparisons using example photos in scenarios that I would actually try to use, right? So I try to be as real world as possible so you can see the difference in how these lenses perform in actual use cases. And today we're going to be looking at a fairly simple landscape, an environmental portrait, and a still life. So which lenses are we going to look at? First up, we have a Vivitar 28mm f2.5. Now, in a previous video, we looked at the 28mm uh, 2.8, which was made by Comine. And you know what? It did pretty well. Our example here isn't the cleanest glass. It has a little bit of fungus in it, but I'm still eager to see how it performs. Typically, these are a little bit of a step up in cost from the uh, 28.2.8s. So uh, I'm hoping to see what that means. Next, we have the Sigma uh, Mini Wide. These are pretty well regarded online, and let's face it, that little Sigma Super Wide 2 turned out to be the most amazing 24mm lens we tested in our second 24mm video comparison. So, how will its sibling perform? I can't wait to see. Next, we have a couple of first party lenses. First up, the Yashica 28mm f2.8. Now, this is not the ML version, this is the older version. ML lenses are, I think, very underrated. There's among some of my favorite vintage buys. Uh, there's a 51. 8, 1, 9, 2, 0, those are really cool lenses. But how will this 28mm perform? Is it a sleeper? Is it great for the money? Let's see. The Konica 28mm 3.5. There are a few versions of this lens. Mine is an excellent condition 5 element version from the late 70s. They're fairly common, and like the other two lenses, you probably pick them up for about $40 to $50. This is not the most well regarded older version. Um, this is kind of middle of the road of the three versions of the Konica 28 35. And last, oh, not last, but next to last, I have a Pentax Super Tacomore 2835. Um, I was not super blown over. I liked the rendering, but the sharpness of the 24 that we looked at wasn't that great. Um, and frankly, I used a Pentax M2828 quite extensively uh, when I used to shoot came out uh, exclusively, and that was never that great a lens. So I'm interested to see how this older version, which is a little bit slower, performs. A lot of folks online seem to think it's better. And of course, against all of these, I'll compare them to the Nikkor 28mm f2.8 AIS. This has been heads and shoulders the winner in all the comparison tests I've performed previously. It's been uh, super sharp at landscape distance, amazing close up, and uh, it's a fantastic lens all around. So I know if any of these are even close, they're a great buy. Let's jump in and start checking them out. Let's take a look at how these lenses perform in a crowded landscape environment. 28s, especially on a full frame camera, are often used for landscape. On the left hand side, I have the Konica 28mm f3.5, and on the right, I have the comparison lens of the Nikkor 28mm 2.8 AIS. I'm focusing in on the gazebo in both of these. Uh, photos taken wide open. Looking at them in maybe the Nikkor a little bit um, sharper rendering, better definition. I'm looking at the bridge. I'm looking at some of the foreground foliage. And actually, if I stick with this Nikkor and I stop it down a little, you see it gets a little bit brighter at f5.6 
and at f11. So you can see the difference that shooting wide open has from a vignetting perspective. On the left-hand side with this Konica, same thing, right? As I stop it down, here's f11, here's f56, here's uh, f35. You can see there's some vignetting there and, and obviously some impact on depth of field. But looking at both of them wide open, if we were to zoom into the, the main focal, because you can see that the Nikkor still has a little bit of purple fringing going on. I mean, so does the Konica, but a very sharp lens. And we still see some of that aberration as we start to look at the bridge. If we move over into the extreme corners, you can see that that Nikkor is still very sharp into the extreme corners. Konica is a good performer in the corners too. This is again wide open. If we were to stop the Konica down to say f11, you would see at that point it really matches or even you know comes from pretty close to surpassing the Nikkor. Although of course the Nikkor at f11, very very sharp. Very hard to tell the difference. Again, a lot of that aberration is cleared up on both of them. Certainly very sharp, sharp enough at the center. Still a lot of good definition. Overall, hard to tell the difference between these two. Nikkor, just slightly uh, better. Um, let's go back to f2.8, the wide open on the Nikkor. And on the left-hand side, let's look at the Yashica wide open. Again, they both have a little bit of uh, interesting bokeh. Yashica looks almost dreamy to a degree. If I zoom in, you can see a, a big difference in sharpness, right? Wide open in the distance. It's pretty clear, right? The Yashica a little bit muddy, wide open in those, in those large distance shots, which is definitely different from how it performed close up big difference, right? But if we stop it down, let's just zoom into those leaves and let's stop the Yashica down to F11. You can see it sharpens up quite a bit and is probably just about as sharp as the Nikkor, maybe not quite as the Nikkor is wide open. Let's keep the Nikkor on the right still wide open and let's look at it compared to the Pentax wide open. Overall, again, a little bit dreamier look on the Pentax. Much older lens, quite as sharp. A little bit sharper maybe than the Yashica, but not quite as sharp as the Nikkor at center. In the corners, you could definitely see a difference. If we were to stop the Pentax down, here it is at F11. You see that it definitely gets sharper, but even at F11, not quite as sharp as the um, Nikkor is wide open. We were to show apples to apples, the Nikkor at F11, still a pretty significant difference. And on the left side, let's take a look at the Sigma. Right away, I could see a little bit more distortion in the Sigma. In the distance, again, big difference between these two in terms of which is sharper. In the corners, I'm sure it's even more pronounced. And yes, you know, Sigma, probably the worst performer in the corners wide open. If we were to stop the Sigma down to F11, Definitely sharpens up quite a bit. Not quite as contrasty as the Nikkor is though wide open. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna compare on the left-hand side, let's look at the Konica at F11. And on the right-hand side, let's look at the Pentax at F11. These are two lenses that you'll probably look at and compare quite a bit. I would probably say center sharpness, slight edge to the Pentax. But as we move away from the center, really hard to tell. In fact, I would probably give my edge or corner performance to the Konica. Maybe a little bit more contrast here on the Pentax side. Okay, so for this shot, we are going to take a look at a portrait. I like 28s on full frame. They make nice environmental portrait uh, focal lengths. Anything above 24, I find really 
useful. It's still a relatively flattering. You can still get plenty of background in. Here's the lovely model Tiffany. She is uh, sitting on a park bench. I'm going to start this with a, a quick apology, guys. For whatever reason, when we were doing these shots, I missed the Pentax. I, I have a little fill-in at the end, but, but unfortunately, that's not going to be part of these direct comparisons. Here on the left, I have the Konica 3.5, and the Konica 3.5 is being shot at f3.5. So I'm shooting the Yashica here on the right at f4. So 3.5 on the left, f4 on the right, Konica on the left, Yashica on the right. So uh, the first thing you can see, I think very similar field of view as we would expect. Background is nice and blurred out. And I think the piece that we would be most interested in would be how did we do with the eyes? The eyes look great in both. It looks nice and sharp. If we were to zoom in to 100% uh, on these, I think you will still see some really, look at the, the lovely definition in the eyelashes. Um, the Konica, even wide open, might be, the lighting's a little better here too, so it's a little hard to tell, but these are both very, very close uh, in the eyes. Now on the right, I'm going to switch this up and I'm going to move it over to the Sigma. A little bit more even, less dappled lighting, so it's a little bit hard to to compare apples and app oranges here. Overall, you can see the lighting is a little bit more even and, and on the Sigma side. Uh, if you zoom into that 100%, you can now see the difference. Like I would say, and sharpness that I really look for, whereas the Sigma just doesn't quite have it. Uh, even though I think this is a, a beautiful uh, composition, uh, it just doesn't have quite that pop. Then let's move to the next, which would be the Vivitar. Now, if we remember on the right, the Vivitar gets all the way down to 2.5 because it does get the background a little bit more blurred. But this is here at F4. Again, trying my best to compare apples to apples. And what you'll see is that the Vivitar at F4, very similar, does, does get it, does get that contrast, looks really good. Just as sharp, I would say, as the, or almost as sharp, I would say, as the Konica. It's kind of a toss-up. Hard to say exactly, or which one is, is a little bit stronger, but a great, great uh, element there. And then let's look at the last, which, again, is the Nikkor. And so here's the Nikkor at F4. We would expect this to be razor sharp. We'd expect this to look great. You can see, again, the background's very nice. Um, and if we are to zoom in, bang, that is really, both eyes just look fantastic. Tremendous amount of sharpness, micro contrast. The Nikkor still in this uh, challenge demonstrates it, you know, its superiority from a sharpness perspective. And again, as I said, I'm sorry that I didn't have the Pentax in there. So I took a, a very angry looking picture of my daughter at 3.5. Uh, just to show you there as well. Um, you know, the eyes are, are pretty good. Um, again, very hard to, to show apples to apples comparison. This is an indoor shot versus an outdoor, um, but not quite uh, maybe as strong um, as some, but it, but, but certainly very usable and, and, not, uh, and not blurry. As soon as you uh, stop it down a little bit, you really get into uh, a great look with the Pentax as well. Let's take a look at a still life scene. Here we have the Pentax 3.5, wide open at 3.5. And on the right, um, we have the Yashica 2.8, wide open at 2.8. Not quite a fair comparison, right? Because the Pentax is, is a little bit slower, right? So it's a lens that's coming in at 3.5 versus 2.8. Still good to show what these all look like wide open. Uh, I really like the Yashica here on the right. I like the colors. I like the, the, the contrast. There's just a, a pop to it in, inside, which we didn't see outside, right? Outside, the Pentax coatings, perhaps, were a, a benefit to it when we were looking at these two lenses. But inside, I don't know, just an interesting rendering here on the Ishika side. The focus point for all of these pictures is going to be the eyes of the Nutcracker. Let's zoom in to 100% and see the sharpness difference between these two cameras. And you can see 
that the Yashica is still very sharp, the Pentax as well. Maybe I give a slight nod to the Pentax, but hard to say, especially when the Pentax is at 3.5 versus 2.8 here. What you will see on the Yashica side is a little bit less depth of field, so a little bit blurrier in the areas that are not directly in focus. And what you'll see is some purple fringing here, so some aberration, uh, the sharp contrast areas. If we go all the way into the corners, Yashica really, really strong corner to corner. You see even a, a little bit more detail on the Yashica side, and, and it's not too surprising. We saw that on the Pentax side outside. You could look at it here on the extreme uh, left. Again, a little bit of a nod to the Yashica wide open, although um, both very close. So let's take a look at the next lens. Let's look at the Vivitar 2.5 on the left. What you'll notice about this wide open shot here, a very, very wide aperture for, for these lenses. If we zoom in, you'll see it's not quite as sharp as that Yashica, but you'll see that the background is, is blurred even more. This is the fastest lens. Maybe you could look at the kitchen cabinets in the back. I would argue that there's a little bit more vignetting. If we were to stop the Vivitar down to f8, you'd see obviously a big difference right? A lot more depth of field and the vignetting is less. Let's zoom in here at some of those contrast points. Not too much aberration or anything. I think it, the, the Vivitar is controlling that fairly well. If we were to look at the Vivitar at f8, you know, you would see it gets extremely, extremely sharp. And here on the right hand side, if we were to look at the Yashica at f8, you'd see that the Yashica also very sharp. But at f8, I might I might give the uh, advantage to the Vivitar. Okay, let's let's keep the Vivitar on the left. Let's bring it back to 2.5. And on the right, let's take a look at the Sigma. So this is the Vivitar 2.5 on the left and the Sigma 2.8 on the right, both wide open. I mean, very very similar rendering. I don't see a huge difference here. If we zoom in to 100%, there I think the Sigma not quite as sharp in the center. In the extreme corners, also not quite as sharp. If we were to stop it down, um, the Sigma to F8, yep, it gets sharper. But at the same token, if we were to stop the Vivitar down to F8, it gets sharper as well. Pretty close there for these two. On the right, I'm going to put the Konica 3.5 wide open. And on the left, let's take a look at the Sigma. We'll keep that Sigma wide open. Uh, and you would expect, sorry, the left, uh, let's get the left down. We would expect the 3.5 to be a little bit sharper, and it is. Again, a lot of chromatic aberration in the Konica. We've seen that outside as well. What I'm going to do is maybe compare the Konica at 3.5 on the left to the Pentax, I mean on the right, to the Pentax 3.5 on the left. So now we have both 28 millimeter f3.5 lenses, one Konica on the right, one Pentax on the left. And I think this is an interesting comparison because you can see at center, both similarly razor sharp, but you can see a lot more chromatic aberration on the Konica side versus the Pentax side. In the corners, Pentax did better than I thought it would. Outside the corners were not so great, but they're, they seem a lot closer or a lot better at the close focal uh, distance. Um, but I'm going to keep the, and if we if we stop these down, Konica to F8, Pentax to F8, there you see, of course, really, really sharp. Konica probably takes a, a bit of a lead there. Chromatic aberration is all gone at that, at that focal length. And going into the corners, lots of detail, really nice and sharp there. Uh, and then let's keep the Konica on the right. In fact, I'll bring it back to 3.5. And on the left, let's look at the Nikkor. Center, maybe I give it to the Konica, believe it or not. I don't know, hard to say. Nikkor is controlling the chromatic aberration a little bit better, but it still appears. But as you start to get to the corners, that's where that corner to corner sharpness of the Nikkor really comes into play. Look how sharp it is in the corner compared. So the Nikkor, really excellent. Let's stop the Konica down to F8 on the right. 
and even at f8, Nikor wide open, I think, provides better uh, better resolution in the corners. Of course, if we move the Nikor to f8 and compare them both together, I think focus might be a little bit different in these two. But you can see that the Nikor is just really razor sharp. So what did we learn today? First, it would mean the world to me if you took a moment to subscribe to and like my videos. Likes and subscribes really help me get inspired. The Sigma, it's the only lens in the group to rival the Nikkor in terms of its minimal focal distance. My version, at least, just isn't as sharp as the others we tested. Is it just my copy? Maybe. I do have a Quantray version that I'm going to test soon. The Vivitar was a nice lens. And since it's the fastest lens tested at f2.5, it really makes for a nice portrait lens. If my version isn't perfect. Better specimen might have performed even better. The Yashica DSB performed better than I expected. It's sharp corner to corner and was a nice all-around performer. It's not a bad choice if you come across one. At 2.8, I'd say it's equal in performance to the Pentax and Konica, but it's a half a stop faster, similarly sized. The super multi-coated Takamar has the best feeling with that buttery smooth focus, and it just made me want to use it. It's relatively sharp in the center, even wide open, but it never quite sharpens up in the corners as much as I'd like for a landscape lens. It has really nice rendering though, and it lacked chromatic aberration, even wide open. The Konica, on the other hand, did have quite a bit of chromatic aberration wide open, but it was very sharp corner to corner. I'd love to test it against the other varieties to see how they all compare, but of all the uh, lenses that I shot in this comparison, it's probably the second best and a great value for the money. After testing about 15 of these lenses, the Nikkor AIS 28mm f2.8 still remains the champ. It bested every other challenger in every test. And, it, and although it does show a little bit of chromatic aberration wide open, uh, you'll have to pry mine out of my cold dead hands. Why this lens doesn't cost $100 US anymore is a complete mystery to me. That's an opportunity for you. Overall, though, any of these lenses can make beautiful pictures. Whichever one you come across, grab it. Get out there and take some great cheap shots.